Hello everybody and welcome back to the shed. Steve with you again. Uh, in this video I'm going to be looking at some 3D uh, printed parts from a company called Micromaster. They're based in New Zealand and Simon has sent me uh, a sample of products all in 1200 scale. Uh, most of them are generic Royal Navy uh, assemblies. Uh, there's just one part that's actually specific to the hood and that's uh, a sample of the hacks director that MicroMaster do. The way that I'm going to do the review is to look obviously in some detail at the MicroMaster parts uh, but where I can I'll compare them to the original trumpeter parts uh, in the kit, the plastic parts and also uh, do a comparison with the Pontos assemblies where We've used Pontos Etch Brass and Turn Brass and in some cases some resin as well. So we'll do a three-way comparison to see how they all compare. I must say I've never used uh, 3D printed parts before and I had absolutely no idea how the technology worked. Um, but I've had a look into it. It's worth investigating if it's new to you. It's very interesting how the uh, 3D printing process works and how it differs to uh, normal plastic molding. So take a look, there's several uh, videos on YouTube uh, that will uh, show you how uh, 3D technology is developing and what's possible with them. We'll have a look at the MicroMaster parts now, we'll get over to the bench and open the box, see what's in there and do a comparison with the other parts that we've got uh, for the uh, hood build that we're in progress with at the moment. Okay, so let's see what we have in here. The parts arrive, some of them attached to the box with some of this st uh, soft glue, which uh, just holds them in place, just to keep them secure. And sometimes they arrive in these little cardboard uh, tubs covered in cotton wool. So in this case we have a set of uh, quads. These are unshielded quads and on this particular base we have the hax director here which as I said was specific for the hood and that comes in two parts. We have a variety of uh, hatches, watertight hatches both with armoured bases and non-armoured bases. We have a carly float, I think this is a 10 by 5 foot carly float and some four inch ready use lockers. If you've been following the hood build you'll see what fun I had building these ready use lockers and there are 35 to construct altogether so uh, if we use these they will be very time saving. Now the parts won't normally come grouped together like this. The 3D technology allows producers to program what is printed on one of these uh, bases and the printing nozzle simply follows the instructions of the computer so it can be programmed to print, I assume, from my limited knowledge of 3D printing, it can produce any range uh, of configurations for these. Normally the parts, if you were buying for example uh, a dozen or 14 Cali floats, they would all come together on one uh, base. So this isn't how they would normally arrive. The quads probably would arrive like that all grouped together and we've got four here which can be used on the hood. So let's remove these from the box. And so that you can see them better, I'm going to take them off the mounts 
or supports and then we can have a really good look at them. To achieve 3D printing properly uh, the parts need to have these supports I won't go into the technologies of it now but um, as I said if you have a look on YouTube you'll see why all these supports are present. This isn't a moulding technology as such so there are no uh, moulds to join together uh, to produce these parts. They're simply built up layer by layer and because of that these supports enable the part to be printed with overhangs on them. So take a look at some of the YouTube videos. It's fascinating how uh, 3D uh, printing technology is developing and what's uh, possible with them. So the first thing I'll do is remove the hacks director. And I'm just going to chip away at these supports. When you're doing this, of course, it's important to be careful which uh, part you're snipping away. Some of these filaments might look like supports but they're actually uh, fine details on the parts themselves so just be aware of that. I think I can see already which axe direction I'm going to be using on the model. It's starting to come free now. So we have the main element of the director there. But we also have this top cover here, which we also need to remove. So I'm going to carefully continue to remove these parts from the base. So these are the quads. I'm just going to try and isolate one of them. This one here has just lost a couple of the muzzles off the barrels, uh, which is a shame. but. Uh, Never mind. Okay, let's see what we've got then. Okay, so first up we have the uh, four inch ready use lockers. So we have the MicroMaster part here, the Pontos uh, etch brass locker here, and this is the basic uh, trumpeter locker. The first thing that we can see is that the trumpeter locker here is inaccurate. It has four equally sized doors and these lockers, the large type lockers, were uh, asymmetrical. So they had two short doors on the bottom uh, and two taller doors at the top, which the Pontos set reproduces. So. Those two uh, trumpeter parts really I wouldn't use uh, on the model. Now if you have been following the hood build, uh, a few episodes ago I built, uh, I think it was 10 of these lockers uh, from the Pontos set. And actually in the end I gave up trying to build them entirely from etched brass. Uh, I couldn't do it. The uh, latch mechanisms were too complicated to get folded up properly. Although I will say that Nigel from Nigel's Modeling Bench had a fantastic idea about how to do uh, these lockers. If you're going to stick with the Pontos parts, he managed to get these latches threaded through uh, and made a fantastic job of them. So much better than I did on my attempts. What I ended up doing was using the trumpeter carcass, the plastic carcass, and just attaching the Pontos etch brass fronts, uh, and also uh, made up some latches here at the sides. 
but they were very, very time consuming. You'll notice that they just have flat bottoms. These lockers actually had little stands at the bottom. So let's take a good look at the MicroMaster part now. So these are really in a different world, I think you might say. The latches are obviously all moulded in, or printed in, should I say. These aren't moulded, of course. The hinges at the side, they're all accurately uh, reproduced here. That's something I couldn't get a neat finish with on the uh, Pontos parts. Or at least not as neat as they are on the MicroMaster on the 3D printed one. The other big difference is that the 3D part has the handles on the upper lockers here in the middle which are actually hollowed out. If you had one 200 scale hands you'd be able to get uh, your fingers through there uh, to open that door. All these latches are perfectly reproduced and they look exactly like uh, the photographs that uh, we can see uh, of the hood but also other ships carried the same sort of locker. You would need 35 of these uh, for a full complement on the hood. There are five for each of the seven four inch guns. Uh, and I think they come in sets of 12, so you'd have to buy three sets of these to fully furnish the, uh, the hood model. But for me, knowing how long it takes to build one of these Pontos uh, lockers, I think personally that the outlay, both in quality and ease of use, uh, is much much better with the 3D printed part here. The other advantage of them of course is I found it very difficult to get a consistent look to these uh, Pontos parts whereas obviously these are all identical uh, so you'll get that uniformity on the model when you put them on. In terms of dimensions they're more or less the same size uh, the 3D printed ones are slightly taller just because they have the accurate uh, bases on them where they're mounted onto the deck. So all in all for me that's an absolute winner. I wouldn't uh, hesitate to use those. You can see the fantastic detail there on the latches and handle mechanisms. When you see photographs of these, they do look incredibly complicated, the latch mechanisms. They look very untidy, actually. Uh, it made you wonder how you ever got into them. So that's a fantastic uh, addition for me. So I think we'll be using some of those. Well, I'll be using 35. Save me a lot of time. So this is one of the Quad Vickers mountings and I've cleaned it up now. I've got most of the supports, the printing supports off, but not all of them. And you have to really understand what these parts are to avoid cutting off uh, the wrong part, thinking it's a support when it's actually one of the fine uh, supports or something like that on the actual gun. Uh, so it's just as well to be careful with that. Now I've actually built up one of the trumpeter quads, which is here, and also one of the Pontos supplied quads, which is in resin, etch brass and turn brass. So again, I've prepared 
all three for comparison we've got the obviously we've got the 3d printed part here we've got the trumpeter offering here and we have the pontos quad here so as i said these are generic they appeared on all sorts of uh, ships in the royal navy so again let's take a look at the trumpeter part the trumpeter instructions for the quad have you build all four with shields uh, and that's not right the two forward quads on the hood uh, were unshielded and the two at the aft side of the ship were had these shields on the problem with the trumpeter kit is that the sights which are here on the top are part of the shield uh, construction so it would be pretty tricky to build these unshielded uh, and use the sights here I can't think how you would do that actually uh, so that's the trumpeter part that probably took I don't know 10-15 minutes to put together the barrels are hollowed out at the end that's a slide mold that's uh, achieved that and you have to construct the base and the four magazines here on the side as well as folding the shield up so that's the trumpeter this is the Pontos uh, quad uh, without the shield Pontos provide four shields one for each gun again which is wrong uh, but at least you have the choice uh, and I'll actually use those shields uh, on the model master quads uh, for the two aft mountings I think these Pontos uh, guns are really quite nice the turn brass barrels are really good the sights are very well detailed they are open sights in the sense that there's proper etched uh, detail on those and the turning wheels are all present so you might just be able to see there on the side that's the training wheel and that's the elevation wheel on the other side so these are all separate parts and it's quite a test to get them together the slight issue for me is that they look slightly undersized and there's some detail on the front that's missing there was um there was some sort of canister here along the uh, bottom front of the mounting which is uh, absent on the uh, resin part in the pontos set but generally that's obviously a lot finer than the uh, trumpeter part on its own although a lot trickier to put together and now when we come to the 3d printed part we obviously have the simplicity of a one piece uh, construction but with all the detail uh, present in that pontos construction which took probably three quarters of an hour to build that as I said these don't have shields but I'll be able to add them uh, for my hood build and they are complete with the pedestals the Pontos uh, quad has a separate pedestal which is built from three parts which is there but the 3d printed version has the pedestal already present here the magazines are a lot more detailed on this the barrel ends are hollowed out although they're not quite as pronounced as the turned brass ones the training and elevation wheels are present and the operator's cradle here uh, is also uh, on the gun all the same fine detail is present on this uh, micromaster have also got the correct 
uh, cylinder down here at the bottom of the mounting. The only thing that slightly lets uh, this down is the sight here on the right hand side which you can see is fairly solid there's no real through detail on it whereas the etch brass sight uh, in the Pontos offering is obviously a lot more refined but it should be possible to actually remove these sights uh, and fit them onto the MicroMaster part here. The other big difference between them is that uh, the 3D parts, uh, the guns are slightly elevated. So there's something like 45 degrees elevation on those. Whereas the Pontos, if they're assembled correctly, they're almost on a flat trajectory here. And I don't believe that it's going to be possible to uh, assemble these uh, to any different elevation without making them look a bit odd. Overall, what I would do is, if I have the option, which I've got, would be to use the uh, MicroMaster 3D printed parts for ease. Uh, probably replace this sight with an etch brass sight and also use the Pontos shields to create the two aft mountings uh, on the hood. That construction of the quads will be coming up in the next part of the hood series uh, when I'll go through that process of modifying these MicroMaster parts for the to be suitable for hood. So we'll put those somewhere safe. I don't think we'll be using the trumpeter part. Although again you can see the one thing that is good on the trumpeter part is the sight which again in etch brass is open. So etch brass at least in this example appears to be a better medium for reproducing these sights. So we'll take a look at the uh, Carlys now. These are the 10 foot by 5 foot Carlys. MicroMaster offer lots of different size Carlys including the large, uh, the large version that is mounted on the aft face of the after control position. So obviously these are all one piece, there's no messing about with these. These are the Carlys that are made up for the model using the Trumpeter Carlys uh, modified with the Pontos etch brass parts. And I got these wrong actually, I built them incorrectly. But they were a real pain to put together I have to say. To build these properly you would have to cut out the centre of the plastic Carly raft just to leave the outer ring, clean all that up and then wrap this etch brass filament around it to create the uh, ropes and also there's a separate floorboard uh, which you would have to insert into the space that you've cleared out. Uh, but they were a real pain and again there are 13, 14 of these to be built for the uh, hood and lots of uh, Navy, Royal Navy ships uh, carried several of these so it's quite a task to put them together in etch brass. Uh, these uh, from MicroMaster on the other hand uh, the 3D printed parts are obviously virtually ready to go they don't need any clean up. They're provided with the oars already in, the floorboard or the floor straps are already in place and are see-through and the outer straps are all correctly located in place together with the uh, loops on the outside of the raft as well so you can see here 
all the loops on the outside. So all in all, they're another really time-saving addition. If you don't want to go to the trouble of building uh, large quantities of these uh, etch brass and plastic parts. So they're really nice. They come in sets of 14, I believe, which is enough uh, for the hood at any rate, and I'm sure it'll be enough for most other uh, capital ships for Royal Navy use. The next thing to take a look at are these uh, watertight hatches and skylights. So these are provided as a set. There are more than this in a set. I think there are three of each variety, but you'd have to check that out on the website. So there are double ones, which are these ones here, and, and just these long skylights here. The comparator with the Pontos set is this part here, which is the equivalent of this. And you can see immediately the difference in size between the two. Uh, when I've measured the equivalent hatch from my plans, these scale out in 1 200 scale at 9.2 millimeters long. The MicroMaster part is just over 8. So if my drawings are right, and I'm not saying they are, they could appear a bit undersized. Uh, but the Pontos parts are well over. I think this is something, it's getting on for 12 millimeters long. So the Pontos etch brass part is probably far too big and over scale. Um, the slight issue with replacing these with the MicroMaster parts are that the Pontos decks have the markings on them for the locations of all these hatches. So if we use the smaller ones uh, from MicroMaster, you'd be able to see the markings on the deck around them. So that wouldn't look quite right. All my hatches are already fitted, so I'm going to live with them. Uh, but obviously, as I said before, these are generic parts, um, not just for the hood. Uh, so they're obviously a lot more accurate in size. They also uh, have much better detail with the hinges we can see the hinges along the top here and also the dogs which are the latch locking mechanisms the screw down mechanisms here uh, on the side are much more in scale than the Pontos ones which tend to stick up too much so we'll just see if we can get a shot of that so you can see how prominent the dogs are there on the front of the Pontos parts and the very long hinges there as well in the brass whereas the MicroMaster parts the dogs are much more in scale see they're not as prominent but much more accurate and the hinges too are the correct shape so overall these are much more accurate the problem comes in using them together with uh, any wooden deck with uh, the hatches already marked out on them, as you have in the Pontos uh, set for the hood. The last thing I want to look at are the hax directors here uh, from MicroMaster. And they come in two parts. So we have uh, a top cover, which locates just inside here. It's... Uh, slightly awkward to get it into position properly but it does fit perfectly and that allows the interior of the hacks to be uh, printed separately so we'll take a closer look at that in a moment you can see the obvious differences between the uh, three the trumpeter parts uh, which is very simplified unfortunately uh, really isn't much like the actual mark III director uh, on hood it's uh, far too square obviously it almost looks as though it's side on in shape uh, but 
it isn't and really it's so far away from being anywhere near accurate that I wouldn't use that at all. I built the Pontos hex which are in resin which are a lot closer to the actual thing. Uh, these are as I said in resin with uh, five resin parts. The two arms are separate and these two boxes and the Pontos hex has a separate edge brass pair of telescopes uh, here on top. So at the time I thought they were really good um, and was quite happy to use those. I would never consider really using the trumpeter parts. But when we come on to the MicroMaster parts I think we've got a slightly different story. For me these are absolutely astonishing. I, d I don't know how these are produced. Well I do but it still appears to be a miracle to me that these uh, are possible. The overall shape is quite different and accurate according to my drawings. On the side we have the separate rungs to access the uh, hacks for the crew who climbed into the top. Uh, there are little fillets all the way around here. Which is a lovely detail. The pedestal is created integral to the part. The Pontos one has a separate brass pedestal. And as I said this 3D printed part has a separate cover. You can see the hatches on the top here where the crew access the director. A bit like a tank turret I suppose. So if we just remove that and we can take a look inside. So we have uh, four seats, sorry five seats all together for the five crew that occupied these devices. The uh, telescopes that are provided as etch brass in the Pontos version are provided here and are obviously a lot more accurate and fine. The separate connecting bars here at the front which are in relief. You can see the can see the seats inside the director here. So five seats for the five crew. The tiny little grab handle at the back. And there are all the uh, boxes, electrical boxes and control boxes uh, on the side of the uh, wall here. It's a real pity as I said that when the cover or hood goes on that a lot of that detail is obscured. So with the top in position you can see the central binoculars here right in the middle you can just see them and those two telescopes, a pair of telescopes on either side uh, looking through this gap. I think that these were fairly unique to the hood. I might be wrong but I'm not sure that any other ship carried the Mark III like this. Uh, I'm sure people will let me know if I've got that wrong. Uh, and MicroMaster provide these in a set of three. There's obviously one either side of the bridge and one on the after control position on the ship. So they're a thing of beauty. Okay, so there we are. Those are the samples that uh, I've received for review. I'm going to get some really good pictures of those parts as a comparison with the Pontos and Trumpeter parts uh, and I'll leave those at the end of the video so that you can see them clearly. In every case uh, I think I would go for the 3D parts uh, and this again is a matter of personal choice. Uh, it's another expense of course to provide uh, 3D printed parts on top of uh, the base kit 
and any other detail uh, set that you might have bought for it. So it's a careful consideration for you to make uh, whether or not to use uh, extra parts like this. There's absolutely no doubt, and I think you can see from uh, the comparisons that I've made, that without exception they're far better than anything in the trumpeter kit and on the whole they're much better as well than the majority of the replacement parts from Pontos. The other advantage to them uh, is that they come ready to use virtually. They need very little clean up because of the printing uh, mechanism. There are no mould lines on them. Uh, so they're ready to use. They just need a quick preparation, uh, priming, cleaning up and priming and painting. So they're a massive time saver. When I do a comparison of some of the things that I've built and compare them with the uh, MicroMaster parts, for example, the quad Vickers mounting took at least an hour to build just one mounting and they come ready provided from MicroMaster ready to use apart from the shields uh, which I'm going to add to them uh, in my particular case. The argument against I suppose is that they don't require an enormous amount of skill to uh, prepare and fit to the model. So if like me you like to work with etch brass as a challenge uh, then they're not going to give you that but uh, in terms of detail for me, uh, from the samples I've received so far, they're absolutely unbeatable. I've never seen anything like it. And I just had to look to see how 3D printing worked to understand how it would be possible to uh, create some of the detail on these parts. So I want to say thanks to Simon Percival at MicroMaster for sending me the uh, items for review. I've got another order on its way for some four inch mountings and I will be using the ready use lockers uh, just to avoid the nightmare of building 35 of those uh, myself. So I'm chickening out with that and I'm going to use the uh, 3D printed ones. So I hope you found that uh, useful having a look at those parts. As I said I'll leave some detailed pictures at the end of the video uh, for the parts that we've just reviewed so you can see them in uh, some close-up detail. So if you are interested go over to the MicroMaster website which is uh, shown below. There's currently provision for all the major ship scales, certainly 1700, 350 and 200 scales are well catered for and also some more unusual scales particularly uh, of use for scratch builders I would have thought. Royal Navy equipment is probably most catered for but there's also some Kriegsmarine and Imperial German Navy and some US Navy equipment as well to have a browse to. So head over to the website and have a look. Ordering is really quick. I think dispatch for these parts was within one or two days and certainly from New Zealand to the UK uh, the delivery is probably something about seven or eight days, something like that. So very quick delivery and Simon gets the parts off really quickly. Some stuff is in stock but as I understand it some uh, of the more obscure parts might need uh, specially printing. So just make allowances for that if you're ordering from MicroMaster. So I'm converted to 3D printing. So I'll be using a lot of these parts, I think, on the hood build uh, that I know a lot of you are following. I'll definitely be using the 4-inch ready-use lockers. I can't bear the prospect of building uh, another 25 of those. So they'll be entirely replaced with the MicroMaster 4-inch ready-use lockers. And I've got some 4-inch mountings uh, on the way as well. The quads I'll use, slightly modified probably. Uh, I'll replace the sights on them, I think, with the etch brass sights that I've got in the Pontos set. And the Carly floats are also a massive time saver as well, so I'll use those. Okay, so that's the review and I'll follow up now with some close-up pictures. I hope you enjoy them. Just to bear in mind that on the MicroMaster website the images are CAD renderings of the parts but it's useful to be able to compare if you go over and compare those CADs with the detailed photographs that I'm going to leave you you'll see that they're very close the detail that's on the CADs does appear 
uh, in the parts themselves. So just bear that in mind though that they are the CAD images that you're looking at. So I'm going to leave you with the pictures. The next video in the hood series will fit some of these parts. Uh, I'm doing some of the uh, secondary armament and I'll include the quad Vickers in that. So we'll take another close look at the Quad Vickers from MicroMaster and do those little modifications that uh, I've suggested with them. So we'll be doing that uh, at the end of the week in our usual Friday night slot. So until then, stay safe everybody and I'll see you on Friday as usual uh, for some more on the hood. Bye for now.